Welcome back to the channel guys. So today's video is going to be a small video on the differences between React Navigation version 2 and version 3. So React Navigation version 3 has a reworked engine. It now uses the React Native Gesture Handler in the background, which allows it to access the operating system's native gesture API. It also uses something known as React Native Screens to improve the overall performance of your navigator. If you're using Expo, which I am in this video, you won't have to install any other dependencies and can directly just install React Navigation version 3 and you'll be good to go. So open up the terminal and let's install React Navigation. Say yarn add React Navigation and we'll go for version 3 by passing in the caret and 3 to make sure that we get the latest iterative version of version 3. Once we have that installed, let's create our first navigator. So let's take this as if it was React Navigation version 2 and let's create our first stack navigator. So here on top, we'll import create stack navigator from React Navigation. Let's create the navigator by saying const app stack navigator is equal to create stack navigator and pass it the first screen called home and for simplicity let's just pass it app here which is already created instead of exporting this app class here let's remove the export default and instead let's export our app stack navigator we have to make sure we pass in default here as well and save that out as you can see this does not work it tells us that the navigation prop is missing from this navigator, you must set up your app container directly. This was not the case in version 2. So let's fix this. On top here, let's import something known as create app container. And before we export it, let's pass in create app container here and wrap the app stack navigator inside it. Now if we save that out, you see that our app is working. So in version 2, this app container was created by default, but in version 3, you need to explicitly create it. Instead of directly exporting this, you could also store that in another variable. Let's call it app container. And let's create another class for home. And we'll pass this app container into our class that we export. So let's first create another class so that we can point that to the home class. I'm just going to duplicate this app class, rename that to home. Also just change this text out quickly. Let's replace app with home here. And inside this app class here, we're going to pass in our app container. And let's export default this app class. So as you can see, our stack navigator is now working again. This will give you better control at your root component. And if you're using something like Redux, you can always use the provider to pass it in here. So that was the first change. Now, if you remember, if we wanted to add some navigation options to our default stack navigator, we would do it here. We'll put in a pair of braces and we'd say navigation options. And then suppose we want to change the header style. So we'd say header style and set the background color to say orange. If we save that out, nothing really happens here. That's because navigation options has been renamed to default navigation options. It's not a big change. But it makes sense because these are the default navigation options for the complete navigator. Suppose you want to change the header style for a particular screen, like the home screen. We can go inside the home screen here and say static navigation options like we did earlier. We'll say header style, say background color and set that to blue. And this should be an equal to here. And we save that out, you see that we've overridden the default navigation options inside the particular class. That covers our stack navigator. But one of the major performance benefits that you'll see are in the draw navigator. So let me give you an example. So let's create our draw navigator. Here, I'm just going to import create draw navigator from React Navigation. I'm going to let the app stack navigator be. And instead, I'm just going to say const app draw navigator. is equal to create draw navigator and for simplicity I'm just going to pull in these screens here and instead of passing the app stack navigator here let's pass in the app draw navigator so here we have a draw navigator with one screen let's create another screen so I'll duplicate this home class let's call that dashboard I'm going to rename that as dashboard as well let's change this header color to white and let's pass that screen into our draw navigator here let's say dashboard 
and let's point it to our dashboard class that we just created. Now if we pull in from the left, you can notice we're getting both our screens. So what's special in this? So if you remember, in version 2, every time you would change your screen, that screen would be unmounted and mounted again. It would not preserve the state of the screen. That has been changed here in React Navigation version 3. I'll just demo it for you. So here in the dashboard screen, I'm going to just pull in the scroll view. So on top here, let's say scroll view. Let's get rid of this view here and pass in our scroll view. Inside that, I'll pass in a view to the height of 1000 and a border width of 5 with a border color of green. So let's go to the dashboard screen. We can see our border here. Let's just make it slightly thicker. And there it's clearly visible. We can scroll down and see the bottom here. Now we're at the bottom of the screen. Let's go back to the home screen and come back to the dashboard screen. You see that the screen stays where it is. This was not possible in version 2. If, for instance, you do not want to enable this, you can force the screen to unmount. For that, you can come into the app draw navigator and here you can just pass in an option called unmount inactive routes and set that to true. If you save the app then and come into dashboard, scroll all the way down, go back to the home screen and then again come back to the dashboard screen, you see that we are no more at the bottom of the screen where we left it. The screen is automatically re-rendered and we've come back to the top. So that covers the main differences between version 2 and version 3. If you guys would like me to do a complete video on version 3, you can let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you for watching and please like, share and subscribe.